Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to worship this morning. We'd like to remind you that immediately following worship, we will have a time on Zoom to connect with our neighbors and to check in and see one another. So I invite you all to look for the link on that via Facebook. I also want to remind everyone that we are starting a Zoom small group this Sunday at 7 p.m. And that study is going to look at the Holy Spirit. So that will just be a great chance to learn together and be together, um, be it virtually. So welcome to worship this morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us offer spiritual gifts acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Alleluia. Give thanks to God. He 
We got everybody here in his hands. It's all everybody here in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Friends, whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Confident in this promise, let us confess our sins before God and neighbor. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word offers freedom from sin, but we confess that we have not obeyed your word. We have harbored malice towards our enemies. We have been deceitful in our relationships. We have been insincere with our commitments. Through gossip, we have slandered our friends. Forgive us our sins and lead us to genuine repentance. Help your children long for truth and light. And we pray this in your holy name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ came into the world to forgive sinners. He himself bore our sins on his body in the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, in Christ and in Christ alone, we are forgiven. Amen. Christ has risen. While earth slumbers, Christ has risen, where hope died. As he said and as he promised, as we doubted and denied. Let the moon embrace the blessing, let the sun sustain the cheer. Let the world ring, firm the rumor, Christ is risen, God is here. Christ has risen for the people whom he died to love and save. Christ has risen for the women, bringing flowers to his grave. Christ has risen for disciples huddled in an upstairs room. He whose word inspired creation can't be silenced by the tomb. Christ has risen and forever lives to challenge and to change all whose lives are messed or mangled all who find religion strange christ is risen christ is present making us what he has been transformation in which God is known and seen. Hi, Mr. Todd here. So we've been talking a lot about the cross and the story of Easter. We know that on the cross, Jesus died to take away our sins and to make a way for us to get to heaven. But how do we get to heaven? How can we be close to God right now? Well, on the night before Jesus died on the cross, Jesus was with his disciples. And he told them that he was going to prepare a place for them in heaven. And that he would be back to take them there. Not just them, but everyone who believes in Jesus. He said, you know the way to the place where I am going. The disciples weren't sure they knew how to get from where they were to where Jesus was saying he was going to heaven. 
They knew that there was this big obstacle in the way, their sin. They knew that they couldn't get there on their own. They knew that they would lose their way. They weren't even sure what that place would be like. So Thomas spoke up, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so Jesus said, you know the way. And the disciples said, no, we, we don't think we do know the way. But they knew Jesus. He is the way. And so because they knew Jesus, because they loved Jesus, because they trusted Jesus, they had everything that they needed to go from here to life with God forever. When Jesus died on the cross that very next day, he destroyed the power of sin that was keeping his friends and all those who trust in him from getting to heaven. No longer would there be a barrier between us and God the Father. But it was still not possible for us to get from there to heaven. So Jesus said, I am the way. And as he came back to life, he became the way for people to go from this life to life with God right now and forever. And for this, we give him thanks. Join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, our way, our truth, and our life. Forgive us for our sin because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. May we be close to you now and forever. Amen. Have you put your trust in Jesus? Have you crossed to life? I have. And it's the best thing that I've ever done. You can do it too. As we put our faith in Jesus Christ and trust him to be our savior, and Lord, he takes away our sin and gives us life forever with God. Let us pray. Risen and reigning Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Listen for the word of God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. My Father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me, so that where I am going, you will be also. You know the place where I'm going. Thomas asked, Lord, we do not know the place you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, 
Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus replied, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been with you all this time? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will even do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So when your heart is troubled, where or to whom do you turn? You know, for me, I call my mom. If I have questions about recipes or how long it could take to defrost a chicken, I call my mom. In seminary, during the many times I was lost navigating Pittsburgh's busy and uniquely confusing streets, I'd call my mom. When I am having a horrible, no good, very bad day, I call my mom. And when I bump up against the darker roads of life that cause my heart to cry and my heart to be deeply troubled, I call my mom. I call her because we have a close relationship. I call my mom because I trust her with my troubled heart and know she has a listening place for me. Conversations with her often provide comfort and assurance. So when your heart is troubled, who offers you pieces of significant comfort? In our text today, the disciples' hearts are very troubled. The setting of our scripture text is grim, sad, and confusing. Immediately before our text, Jesus shares his last meal with his disciples he washes their dust cake feet and talks about how the disciples who have followed him for the most part of three years could no longer follow where he would be going next. The disciples are in a place where they certainly have more questions than answers and are sitting in the tension of not knowing what might be coming next. Much like today, there were a lot of unknowns. Yet despite all he was about to go through, Jesus still offers them a comfort that only he can. I appreciate how Eugene Peterson, a pastor, translates verse 1 in his message translation. It reads, don't let this throw you. As though Jesus sees his friend's anxiety rising, and is helping them take a deep breath. Jesus does not leave the disciples without some final important lessons in this discourse. And his response and reassurance to the, the disciples still rings true to us today. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, who is the way, the truth, and the life. I have a place for you, and there's always room for you. You know me, therefore you know the way. Like a mother scooting over to make room next to her on the couch for a scared child, saying, scooch in, cuddle close, and rocking the child, telling them to trust her. It will be okay. Christ comforts his friends and us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. These words of comfort, these are the words of comfort that the world needs right now. Perhaps you have heard portions of the scripture passage 
at memorial or celebration of life services. I know I've read this text before by many bedsides, holding the hands of friends before they pass on. These words provide a level of comfort and assurance. We can bring our troubled hearts to this text and to Christ. But Christ does not stop there. Thomas, who is often wrongly deemed as doubting Thomas, though truthfully I think inquisitive Thomas is more appropriate, for he reminds us to pour out our questions. Thomas asked the very realistic question, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we then know the way? Perhaps I can sympathize with Thomas's question because I too want to make sure I am going the right way. I want to make sure I have a valid roadmap and a strong GPS signal to help along the way. And once again, I am reminded of a particular road in Pittsburgh that serves as an entryway into the city after the Fort Pitt Tunnel. This road can be very confusing the first time entering the city, and even if you know the way, you can easily get distracted by the city views, or there could be multiple cars blocking the lanes you need to get over into very quickly, and you could end up on the wrong path. We ask questions and are free to ask them because we want to make sure we are on the right path and that we are going the right way, that we are staying close to Christ. Friends, if you think about it, we know there are sometimes other things or people that we put our trust in, other gods we construct for ourselves who are not the way, the truth, or the life. These gods are imposters, even if they look beautiful, speak kindly, and make the most alluring promises. These gods pretend to make the world less scary and tamer. Christian writer Debbie Thomas describes just a few gods we may be tempted to view as the way. She writes, the God who bargains, transacts, and seals the deal, so that if I do A, then God does B. If I behave, I'll be loved. If I mess up, I'll make God angry. If I work hard, I'll earn forgiveness. A God who has a place for me only if I uphold my end of the deal. A God whose omnipotence guarantees safety. The God who spares children, eliminates viruses, conquers depression, ends anxiety, and eliminates terror. Who makes the way easy and safe. Or perhaps a God who makes faith easy, who provides answers to all my burning questions, erases all doubts, plants clear and visible signs that we can't miss because they hit us directly in the head. A God who comes when called and leaves when dismissed. Friends, have you ever been tempted to follow any of these gods? It can be tempting to believe that these little gods we create for ourselves are the way. But friends, like Philip and Thomas, like Peter, James, and John, like Mary, Martha, and the others, we know the true way. Early Christians were called followers of the way, and there is no God hidden behind the back of Jesus Christ. In our hearts of hearts and by the help of the Holy Spirit, we know the way. We know Jesus. As theologian Robert Jensen observes, God is not known by us because we can be smarter, or figure God out. In the wor word made flesh, God is known in the self-giving, self-emptying love that is God's Son. So friends, what does it mean for us that Jesus is the way? The way of Christ is the way of forgiving our enemies and welcoming the outcast. 
the way of Christ is scooting over and making room at God's table for our fellow oddballs, for people who are loved and valued by God, even if they look different from us or have a different political view. The way isn't always easy and can be demanding and precarious. Following the way takes time and guidance by the Holy Spirit's nudgings. We are following the way when we take meals and groceries to our neighbors who are vulnerable, when we seek to care for the least of these. God helps us and finds us along the way and with every unknowing we embrace, God finds us one more time and puts us on the path. You have a place with me, Jesus tells his friends. God is not exclusive. God is roomy and welcoming. As the beautiful children's song so faithfully reminds us, God's got the whole world in his hands. Friends, you have a place with God you have a place. We are invited to live out our story as God's story, empowered by and with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled. Though we may feel alone and anxious, the way is open before us. And we know Jesus. The way will bring us home. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, we are here, perhaps not unlike Jesus's first disciples. We come to you a little fearful, scattered, grateful for our encounters with the risen Christ, but troubled and unsure what to do next. As we continue to worship in our separate spaces, we long to be together, gathered in your home, brought to the places you prepare for us. In our anxiety over the duration of this pandemic and in our worries about the many and long ramifications of this trying time, we want desperately to believe in you and believe in Jesus. We pray for an outpouring of your spirit. Send the comforter, our advocate, to show us the way. Remind us of the truth and grant us abundant life. Lord, we have questions. We know there are lessons we should know well, but cannot seem to recall. We seem to feel up upended by so much change and so little control. We confess that there are commandments of Jesus we remember but struggle to keep. We need to be honest about our misgivings and doubts Confident that you will love us to the end, and despite our failings, we will share with you all the troubles in our hearts. We are troubled by the mounting deaths caused by COVID-19. We are troubled by the growing numbers of lost jobs and economic turmoil. We are troubled by our inability to be close to the ones we love when they need us most. We are troubled by children missing out on their education, those who wonder when they will eat next, those with no place to find shelter. We are troubled by people wrestling with addiction, those suffering from mental illness, and those languishing in loneliness. We are troubled by pain within and without, the violence inflicted on the innocent, and the cruelty perpetrated on the vulnerable, the scarcity that belies your generosity and abundance. Lord, we come to you aching to be given a place to rest and a space to set our burdens down. We come to you because we believe in you, your grace, your mercy, your compassion, and your power. You promise us spaces of rest, inexplicable peace, joy not dependent upon our circumstances. In you we find our home. You set us free to do your work in this world. 
Grant us the courage to name how we feel, lament what we see, and then turn towards the people who need their hearts put at ease. Make of us living stones who create buildings of relief, shelters of compassion, and tabernacles of mercy. Lord, we boldly ask to follow you so closely that others will come to know you and believe in you through our work and our witness. May our faithful discipleship ease our troubled hearts and perpetrate the love of the one whose name we pray, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As people of God, let us continue to offer ourselves and the fruit of our labor for God's work in the world. Let us worship God with our offerings. from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead. We are one with 
with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead. We are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Jesus Christ and by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God provides guidance for us each step of the way. Go and follow this guidance full of courage and trust, knowing that God loves you infinitely and will not lead you astray. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.